Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this moment in time. And now, whenever and wherever you happen to be, regardless on what timeline you're residing, regardless of What plane of existence in the matrix you are perching upon today? That you are able to take a step back and look at your life and abandon all hope. What? Oh my God. Elena, what do you mean abandon all hope? Have you lost your mind? No. I'm going to explain this in a second because my friend wrote me. He wrote me a letter today, an email, and what he said blew my mind. And this is what he said. He said, from now on, Elena, I need you to give up all hope. Forget about hoping about having money in the future. Because hope is a nasty little lie that we tell ourselves to feel better, but hoping for something just pushes it into the future, farther and farther into the future. And since the future never, ever, ever comes, you still go without the thing that you're hoping to have in the future. Oh my God. Are you just like mind blown? right now because that's pretty much how I was earlier today when I was contemplating my friend's words in fact I'm going to read a couple lines from this email I don't think Kyle would mind because he wants to help other people in fact years ago he made a lot of money helping other people raise their prosperity consciousness in New Zealand and in Australia. So he says that hope is a failure mechanism. It's a failure mechanism. It's literally a mechanism of failure. Having hope is a failure mechanism. And this is what he says. The concept called hope shoves results into the future and away from the now hoping to have money is the same as not having money now hope is a subtle con job where you have the hope or the wish instead of having the cash having cash now starts with accepting that you have cash now it's almost like lying to yourself except it works If you declare it so. Hope is a subtle con job, guys. Holy shit. That's a freaking revelation if I've ever heard one. Is it a revelation to you? So, from this point forward, guys, this is what I'm going to say to you. (laughs) At least today, this is what I'm saying to you. Abandon all hope, ye who would enter here. Abandon all hope, ye who listen to Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast today. Hope is a failure mechanism. Hope is what shoves your future blessings, well, farther into the future. So 
So I'm going to ask you right now, stop hoping for money. Stop hoping for the job. Stop hoping for the acceptance to the university. Stop hoping for the membership in the club. Stop hoping for the perfect relationship. Stop hoping for kids. Stop hoping. Stop hoping. Stop hoping. What are we going to replace the hope with, babe? We're going to replace it with uh, having. (laughs) Declarative statements. I have the money. I have the kids. I have the apartment. I have the job. I have the love. I have everything I want. I've got the money. I've got the cash now. Boom, boom, boom. Cha-ching. Cha-ching for everything. I've got it now. I have it. I am a haver. I am not a hoper. Are you a hoper or a haver? From this point forward, just be a haver. Because hoping for things in the future, you're never going to get it. Because the future, (laughs) where's the future? Does the future ever become the now? No. The future always remains the future. You know, just this reminds me of these um, beautiful plates that I wanted so badly. I mean, I was desperate to get these plates. I just, I had to have them. And I told my husband, I really, really, really want these plates. There's something beautiful and special and magical about these plates. It was like, why? You know, what's so great about them, you know? I'm like, well, just look at them. He's like, yeah, they're, they're cute. They're pretty. And I'm like, don't you understand? These are like, I think they were like 1929 reproduction red hobnail glass. <laughs> I'm like, now, okay, look, if we could go to the, the uh, antique store and go find a, you know, a 12 place setting like this is, Let's go do it. But every time we went, we would find like one cup, one bowl, maybe a plate. And they would be like green and then white and then pink or gold, you know. But what I found was these were, they were imported from China. They were discontinued. They had only so many left and it was now or never, we're never going to have these again unless we bet we buy them now. And my husband's like, why do you want these plates? We've got these gorgeous cobalt blue glass plates. This is what we eat on. This is always, these have always been our plates. I go, those are our day to day plates. They're beautiful. They're blue glass. They're gorgeous. And on special occasions, I would put like a, a golden, um, it was really a plastic plate spray paint of gold. It was called a gold charger. Oh my God. <laughs> if you guys have ever watched any kind of home decorating show, you know what the hell I'm talking about. I can't freaking believe I, I know what a gold charger is. But anyway, so I'd have the gold plate charger. Then I'd have the, I made, I, I literally sewed really beautiful um, tablecloths. And I had, because I had kids, you know, and when things get, Spilled or messy, I just take the tablecloth off, throw it in the washing machine, put a new tablecloth up. Everything feels fresh and new. The kids loved it. I loved it. It made my life a lot easier. So, um, and it was fun, you know, to change out the look of the room. And it made it fresh and new for the kids, and it was fun and sweet. But I was just like, there's something about these plates. And I always wanted to live in a house built in the 1920s. I've always loved the Victorian style homes. And I always wanted that, but I lived in a home built in the 1980s. And like, so this is kind of my, you know, I mean, sure, these plates were not made in the 1920s. They're not real antiques, but there's something magical about the hobnail. I don't know. I just love antiques. And so I talked to my husband into it. And that was my Christmas gift that year. He bought me the red hobnail hand blown. Each piece 
completely hand blown, by the way, red hobnail reproduction, 1929 plates. And you could hold the plates up to the light and every single one of them was completely different. The coloration, everything was totally like some looked a little bit more orange. Some looked a lot more deep wine red, but they were all, you know, uniformly. They weren't like one was orange, one was purple, you know, like they were all, they were all pretty cool, but they all had variations because every single plate was individually different and it was enough to serve 12 people with a goblet, like a wine glass and a cup, like a coffee cup with a little plate to go with a coffee cup and the, the salad plate and the dinner plate and the dessert plate and the plate. I mean, it was 200 pounds worth of hobnail reproduction glass. It was one of the most gorgeous sets of dishes I've ever had in my life. And we would pull them out on special occasions. And my husband's like, we paid over hundred dollars for these plates. It was like $30 for shipping or something like that. And like a hundred dollars for the, for the glass, <laughs> the glassware. And it was, oh my God, it was a bitch to move. Oh my God. I mean, when I got a divorce, it was just like, I mean, I, I think I threw my back out. <laughs> Lifting these one box of these plates was literally a hundred pounds. <laughs> I didn't break one though, baby. I didn't, I, I loved those plates and I honored them, but I always had this, I hope someday attitude towards these plates. I hope I can have a fabulous dinner party and invite enough people to fill all the plates. And I never did. Years later, I lost them when I lost all the stuff in storage when they couldn't wait to get into my stuff and steal everything I owned. And instead of contacting me when I missed a payment, they took everything, which was illegal. They needed to, by law, contact me six different ways and give me six months. And they had sold my stuff within three months and and wrote me one email one time. And that was it. They stole everything I owned, including my beautiful uh, hobnail plates that just nobody can, like you can't even order them anymore. They're gone. It was, it was a limited edition thing. They were only available one year and it's over. They're gone. I mean, not to say that I can't find hobnail somewhere else, but it's never going to be as beautiful as these plates. The hobnails, the the hobnail is like, um, it's like these little bumps. (laughs) It was just the way that they processed, um, things for a while in the twenties. And I think maybe the thirties, possibly as late as the forties. But I mean, I just, I had started to really get into antiques. I had always wanted a Victorian house. It was always my thing. And, you know, years later, I actually bought a Victorian house. I I have, it's not a painted lady in San Francisco as much as, oh, God, that's the kind of house I always wanted. But, no, this, I, I have a brick mini mansion in Detroit. I still own it. And um, she was born in 1924, <laughs> my house. Uh, so she's coming up on 100 years old, and she's standing Stall, uh, just as tall and straight and, and perfect as the day she was made. Very well built house, gorgeous house. But, um, and I don't have my plates, I, which would so much, I would love to have had those plates in that house. But I always have these hope things. Like, I will hope that I have people over. I hope that I have enough people that would want to come over. I hope that I have family and or friends to come over and it it just kept pushing it into the future. And I had hoped this with my husband and then we divorced and I'm like, well, abandon all that hope because whatever. And it got to a point where I looked at my kids one day and I said, you know what? Today's the day we celebrate. And they're like, where are we going to celebrate? I'm like, 
We should celebrate that we have a place to live, that we're alive, and we're going to use the red dishes today. And they're like, but it's not Christmas. I'm like, that's okay. And we started using the dishes and we started using them every day. And we felt very special using these really special dishes. And they were very beautiful, very special dishes. And my kids loved it. And so now that's become a part of my memories. It's become a part of my children's memories. And even though we no longer have the beautiful red hobnail dishes, we have the memories of having had them. And maybe someday they'll, you know, recreate them and maybe I could get them again. And maybe I'll give them another color. Maybe in the future they'll be an emerald green. That would be awesome. Maybe I could get a set of hobnail dishes that's a different color for every guest. And maybe I'll only get four of place settings instead. Or six or eight, maybe. But I'm not going to hope for it. I'm just going to say, you know what? If ever <laughs> these kind of dishes come around again, I am a haver of them. And I have already been a haver of them. Because in the past I had them, I was a haver. I am a haver now. No one can take that experience away from me, even though they took the dishes away from me. I still have them in my mind, you know? So I'm going to tell you guys right now, stop hoping to use those be- those fancy dishes someday. Stop hoping for the fabulous dinner parties that will never come because they're in the future. Accept that it might just be you tonight. Eat on the good damn dishes. Eat on the good dishes. You know, just let your kids eat on the nice dishes. Trust them enough to eat on the nice dishes. If they break one, eh. At least they got to have a meal on it first. And there's one less dish got to wash. <laughs> My kids never broke one. Never. They were so good with these dishes. And I was always scared. Oh, my God. But but I, I trusted them. And what's funny is I actually... There was another set of dishes that I absolutely loved. That was also in that... They were only like $25. It was just like a normal day-to-day type of set. It wasn't super special. It was only four plates setting. You know, four cups, four bowls, four plates. And it was four different colors. And it was all my favorite colors. It was like uh, an ivory and a green and a um, kind of a rusty, orangey, like Halloween-y, rich kind of color. And um, it was like in plum purple, green, rust, and and uh, this orange and the green was um like a moss green and the plum was very rich almost like an eggplant and I remember my husband saying oh those are ugly dishes I don't like them they don't even match I'm like but that's what the beauty of it is you know you can mix and match them and you you know you could go through a whole week and never have the same place setting (laughs) You know, you could have like the orange cup with the, you know, the white plate. And then tomorrow you're going to have the green plate with the, with the purple cup. Like, you know, it's just, it was, and they all matched somehow. And the, and my first act of, um, independence as it were after, um, we broke up was I, I ordered those for myself and they showed up and I was like, Oh my God, these are the most beautiful dishes, the most beautiful day to day dishes. And it was like symbolic of like the new chapter and the new beginning of my life. And my kids loved the new plates. They were shaped really strangely. They weren't round or square. They were kind of in the middle of round and square. They were very, very cool. And the cups were enormous. They held a lot of coffee. And oh my God, did I appreciate those cups. They were like cappuccino cups. And I use them every day and, and, and every 
week, like on the weekends, we would, we would use the red plates. And sometimes my kids would get up early and they would make a special uh, treat for the rest of us on the pretty red plates. And sometimes we'd mix and match all the plates, whatever we felt like we could do. Because we stopped hoping about using them in the future. And we decided to use them now and have it now. I think it's really important, guys. I really, really think that's important. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. Because it's a subtle con job. It is. It's a con job. Hope is a con job. <laughs> Should you give up all hope on your, of your, on yourself? Well, I wouldn't put it that way. Just stop using the word hope. You know, like I hope to be this, I hope to be that. You are that. You are already that. Be that now. You hope you're going to graduate this year? Sure. But have it in your mind that you are graduating this year. I am graduating this year. I am finishing my school. I am doing fantastic in my school. I'm so grateful. This is the year I graduate. Yes, baby. Don't do that subtle con job on and because it's a failure mechanism. It's really going to put your mind in a, in a place where, oh, well, that's the future. We don't have it now. We can accept not having it now. So we don't have to, we'll just say the word hope. That looks good for people. Sure. You know, people think, oh, well, she's hoping for that. Sure. All right. Have it now. Accept it now. Know it now and live it now. Another thing that's very subtle with the word hope is um, is something I've been doing recently. And I, I say, well, I'm hoping that within three weeks I will finish my training. It's grueling. It is like so hard because I I mean, I'm doing a full week's worth of work every afternoon and it takes me like six hours a day. I'm working on this, but it's intense. It's intense. It's like, I have to really concentrate and I have to put together lesson plans like I'm a teacher already and I'm just like it's burning me out mentally I'm just like ugh. but hope has creeped in that subtle con artist bastard hope has creeped in when I say uh, I'm hoping to finish in three weeks And that kind of gives me a little bit of an out, doesn't it? It's a little bit of an out in it. (laughs) I mean, three weeks from now, if I don't finish, then I could use that as an excuse. Well, I was hoping to have, but I didn't. So that's okay. It was just a hope anyway, right? Oh, another mind blow. It's another one of those boom, It, it is when you think about it. So I'm going to say right now, I know I'm going to finish it in three weeks. I know it's going to be hard and grueling, but I know in three weeks it'll be okay because I will have already been used to working every afternoon, Monday through Friday for six hours a day. So when I get a job working five hours a day in the afternoons, all right, well, it's not going to be that big of a deal, is it? It's going to be the same as what I've been doing, but at least I'll be making more money or making money at all, you know, teaching and God told me to do it. I'm like, all right, cool. I think I'll make enough money where I could support my kid and I for the next, you know, years, few years while at the same time promoting my show and having my show and 
that's what I know I'm going to do. It's what my plan is. And nothing's derailing me. I'm here. I'm doing my plan. I'm doing it. So I'm not going to say I hope to finish in three weeks. I will finish in three weeks. I know I'm going to finish in three weeks. Because I'm not going to let myself down. I'm not going to let my son down. I can't lie to him. If I say I'm going to do something and then I don't do it, oh my God, I never hear the end of it. So I have to do it. (laughs) And you have to do it too. No matter what it is, you have to do it. You have to be a haver, not a hoper. Stop hoping. Start having. Start having today. And that's pretty much all I got to say about that. But interesting concepts, right? I mean, my friend Kyle, he's he's pretty cool. And I don't know. He's been wanting to come down to Ecuador. He was planning on coming in August. But now he's waiting for the coronavirus thing to stop, you know, trying to figure everything out. But he's lost two houses to the fires in California. He's done. He's done. He doesn't even live in a forest. He lives south of the forest. He lives outside of my town that burned down Paradise, you know, a couple years back now. In fact, the last time I saw Kyle was in the town of Paradise. We met at the Black Bear Diner. God rest that beautiful restaurant soul. Black Bear Diner is one of the coolest places. It's just one of the coolest places, period. If you've ever gone to Mount Shasta, California, I'm sure you've stopped there. It's it's awesome. And if you haven't, I'm telling you right now, you've got to stop. You gotta have the the um they have like an onion thing. Oh my god. <sighs> These onion rings. And they've got garlic fries and onion rings. And my my husband and I used to take the kids up there. We take a long drive over to Mount Shasta and and just go eat at the Black Bear Diner and drive around the mountains and just look at all the snow and walk around and try to breathe. It was like a challenge to breathe in the high elevation. <laughs> you know, my kids loved it. And then then we'd eat the Black Bear Diner. And, and they'd get sleepy and they'd sleep on the way home and we could, my husband and I would listen to music and we would talk and we got to know each other a lot during our road trips. We were together 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 13 years, close to, close to three, 13 years. When we were married out of that though, like 11 and a half years, we were together a year before we got married. Which is always a good rule to do. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, there's something about those long road trips. And boy, the truths start to come out when it's just you in the open road. And it's dark and there's no one else around. And you start talking in the middle of the night. And we just got so close during all of those road trips. And my God... There were a lot of road trips, a lot of road trips. We went to Arizona several times. We went to New Mexico several times. We went to, I want to say we went to Nevada, but Nevada was the way we got to everywhere else. So we never, Nevada was never a destination, but we took a lot of day trips. We went all over California. And all these road trips were in a Westphalia, (laughs) a a Volkswagen Westphalia. I mean, really incredible, really incredible times in our lives. And if you ever have a Westphalia or a VW, I highly recommend taking out the motor and putting in a Porsche 911 motor. (laughs) Because it's really worth it. You don't want to be chugging up a small hill at 30 miles an hour. You want to roar up that sucker at 80 miles an hour. You want everybody else to look at their their gauges to to and see what's going on with their car because 
There's no way a VW is going to pass them on the open road against the wind uphill. <laughs> oh my God, it was some of the funnest times we ever had. And it was funny as hell. I mean, if I had known then what I know now about YouTube, I would have taken all the videos of all the people like looking at their gauges like, what the hell? How How, how is it even possible? <laughs> I mean, we, I mean, we, we souped that baby up. It was so incredible. We got this ugly old Westphalia pea soup green and we got it for $1,600. Oh my God. And it was a project and a half. I mean, we put so much work and I mean like $10,000 worth of stuff into it. $4,000 $4,000 motor, $4,000 paint job. Oh my God. It was an incredibly beautiful piece of art. It was a piece of art and we were fixing it up for our baby daughter. We bought it when I first got pregnant and it was for her and my, uh, my in-laws like bastards <laughs> went ahead and didn't even bother to mention it to me and sold it. And she, she contacted them and said, you know, that was for me. So what, I mean, that was like a $10,000 vehicle. I'm sure they sold it for like a thousand bucks. They don't, didn't know what they had. He even made a custom, um, shifting gear. And because, uh, of the whole hippie peace love thing, he found a Jerry bear and, and made a custom, um, stick shift handle. It had a Jerry bear in it and it had a light in it. And it literally lit up at night. It was, so it was like a glowing blue ball with a cherry bear in it. I mean, like everything was freaking custom on this thing. It was incredibly like the funny, weird little details. I made the curtains. I, I made the beautiful turquoise and blue and white curtains. I mean, I don't know. I just, I, I look back on some of the things in my life and I, and I've been missing some things like that. Like, the sound of the bus as it was being warmed up just the way it smelled even though we put a bunch of new upholstery in it it still had a weird old smell to it it was a 19 let's see it was air cooled not water cooled I want to say it was an 84 Westie Westphalia I don't know if you're if you're if you're a VW enthusiast I mean, you know everything. It's like a secret club. You, you the, When you first get a, a Westphalia or any kind of VW, even if you get a little bug, you know, but the, the Vans, the Vanagans, the Westphalias, all of the VWs, the minute you get one of these, it's almost like you've just joined a secret society of hippies, even if you're not a hippie yourself, because they're cool. I mean, they're like, they're, we bought it for camping and we loved camping. And there was this um, thing that started happening. Every time we came across anyone else ever that had a VW, they would throw up the peace sign like we're living in the 60s, man. It was so freaking crazy. I was like, whoa, we just joined a secret society that only other VW owners know about. They're not going to talk about it or tell you about it unless you join the club <laughs> and it's just the craziest thing and, and VW people will they'll like drive up right next to you and start talking to you about parts and and hey I found this new catalog and you could get aftermarket parts and and they make custom you know this and custom that because you can't get the parts anymore you have to have half of the things machined you got to go find somebody that has all the equipment. They're willing to do it and they get excited about a new project. So I don't know. I've been thinking about those days lately and I've been thinking about just weird things too. Like my son said to me um, about all the candy he's been missing. And we start talking about pop tarts of all weird things. They're not that good, but they're a part of my childhood. They're a part of my kid's childhood. Of course, pop tarts for my kids were like the health food ones. <laughs> they weren't nearly as good as the, the really sugary ones. 
but I let them have the sugary ones once in a great while for special occasions like Christmas morning or whatever. And they, every now and again, we, we, we would talk about it. And my, my youngest is like, you know, I really miss Pop-Tarts. I miss Uncle Mark's um, weird little trick of putting butter on the Pop-Tarts. I'm like, yeah, I know. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And that, it, it, my, my brother was just like, <sighs> he ate so much when he was a kid. And he's like six foot four now. And I'm not related to him. I'm only five foot one. <laughs> just totally different genetic pool, right? But my, my little, I call my little brother. He's freaking enormous. He's very, very tall. Very, very wide. <laughs> I mean, his shoulders are like freaking like eagle. Like eagles that are huge. Or like a condor. He's like a freaking condor. I don't know. He's huge. <laughs> His fingertips to fingertip, he's like six foot four. He's like a giant. He's literally like a giant. Last time I saw him, he was laying down and he told my my little girl, she was a toddler, and he says, climb the mountain. See if you could climb the mountain. And he laid down and he grabbed his stomach. His stomach was like four feet off the ground. <laughs> he's literally a giant. He's a giant. You know, um, yeah, I just heard from my brother today, so it was nice to hear from him. But he used to put butter on Pop-Tarts, so I told my kids about that. And they had to try it, because that's, like, crazy. No one puts butter on Pop-Tarts like it's toast. But but my son and I were talking about that today, and he was like, oh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, you can't get them in South America. It's just, um, you could get Nutrageous. There's a couple things that are similar you know, but you can't get a Reese's peanut butter cup. Red licorice. And we were talking about, oh, let's have an import. We want to have an import store, a candy store. Because <laughs> we want Pop-Tarts again and we want candy again. I'm like, well, that would be really interesting. Maybe we should do an import store. When the coronavirus thing is, is um, no longer a threat, maybe we'll open up a little import store. We could have like a little reading room, an import store. You know, we could make people like little, like a quiche and a coffee, maybe some desserts. And also sell candy and also have books. I want to have a little metaphysical bookstore. So we've been talking, we've been tossing around all these ideas. You know, and seeing there I go, did I just say the word hope? I freaking hope I didn't. <laughs> It's part of our vocabulary, and we have to understand that it is a subtle con artist. But I am hoping that the coronavirus finishes itself and goes away. I, you know, I would love to have a world in which the the coronavirus no longer exists. That would be, um, that would be just absolutely peachy king. <laughs> I know, Lena. No one says peachy cane anymore. All right. I like seeing these old these old fashioned things. They're so strange, right? They're just really, really crazy, weird. And people were so interested in these and saying these all the time, like it was just vernacular. I, I watched this very old movie a long time ago and this lady said, Oh, I had a brainwave with you. I'm like, wow, that's a weird one. Brainwave. I had a brainwave with you. It means we have the same thought tw- at the same time. I love that one. We had a brain I had a brainwave. And the other and the other part is of of that later in the movie she said, Oh, I just had a brainwave. Meaning I just had a thought. <laughs> So it kind of meant two different things, depending on the context. And I thought that was very odd. I love watching the old movies. Anyway, I'm going to get into the space weather stuff. Because it is important that we are vindicated. (laughs) You know, we say that we're having all these ascension symptoms. And, you know, we know we're in the fifth dimension. And and it just, it also seems like we're kind of crazy, right? 
you know, you, you listen to the show and I'm seeing it, you're seeing it. You're like, Oh yeah, we're normal. And then you go out into the world and you, you mention this to any, any person who's a quote unquote normal person. And they're going to look at you like you're off your fucking rocker. <laughs> you know, like what the hell are you talking about? Wall's still solid. Damn it. <laughs> my, my ankle still hurts. No way we're in the fifth dimension. Yeah, we, yeah, we are. You know, so I like I like reading the science. You know, looking at the science, and then we can kind of realize that yeah, something is going on. It's not just us. We're not feeling weird and woozy and dizzy and all kinds of weird, like fearful anxiety energy for nothing. So when I tell you guys what's going on, you're like, oh yeah, well there we go. We are armed with the science to back up our spiritual claims because science and spirituality are combined in metaphysics, right? All right, so solar wind speed today is 434.1 kilometer per second. Quite a bit slower than the past two days, but faster than it's been in weeks, honestly. We do have sunspot number 12 on the front, the the uh, northwest facing, well, facing Earth, part of the sun. And that's pretty cool. So AR2770 is a member of solar cycle 25. Good to know, right? So we are now entering into a stream of debris from the giant comet Swift-Tuttle which is the source of the annual Perseid meteor shower. Forecasters are expecting the shower to peak a week from now. Peak a week. So cute. (laughs) And as this composite image shows on spaceweather.com, they say that a lot can happen between now and then. So a couple years ago, this man, Peter Horalek, saw 407 Perseid meteors in eight days. But he put together a picture of it, a composite picture. It took him a long time, two years worth of work and 450 hours of post-processing. And he, But he did it, and it's worth it, and he wants you to see it, so... This is really beautiful, the Perseid meteor shower, according to him. And it's very beautiful, all the meteors he took a picture of. It looks like fireworks. It's pretty incredible. So if you want to check it out, that is at spaceweather.com. All right. So as far as the cosmic rays is concerned... Uh, solar minimum is underway. The sun's magnetic field is weak, which allows the extra cosmic rays into our solar system. And the neutron counts from the University of Oulu's Sodon Kailas Geophysical Observatory. It shows that the cosmic rays reaching Earth in 2020 are near a space age peak. Today, they are 9.6%. Of the space age average. That's high. There's been zero change in the past 48 hours. And that's good to know. Um, There is new solar wind that is flowing from the equatorial coronal hole on the sun. Which will be reaching Earth on August 7th to 8th. So expect to feel a little bit out of sorts. Or if you do feel out of sorts and it's the 7th or the 8th of August, you're going to go, oh yeah, right, it's the solar wind, the solar radiation coming our way. All right, I get it. We still are always being bombarded by the cosmic radiation that's not from the sun. Because our magnetic field is weak on Earth as well as what I just read to you. It's weak on the sun. And that allows for a lot more radiation to come in. But the good news is about the radiation is it does fix our or change our DNA and helps us to evolve and grow faster. 
So it's kind of interesting. Anyway, according to the uh, NASA All Sky cameras and the All Sky Fireball Network, above the United States, uh, they are always looking for meteoritic fireballs. And today, uh, the re- the network has reported forty fireballs. Forty. Oh my God. Now, what's really odd about this is this report says on August 35th, 2020. (laughs) That's freaking hilarious. There is no August 35th like ever. Unless I've hopped another timeline. (laughs) Unless maybe, what, can you imagine if the months were like 40 days long? (laughs) When, when, when the birthday? Oh, August 39th, you know? (laughs) Like, what the hell? What the hell? All right, so August 5th, I'm sure, is what they really mean. So today, they reported 40 fireballs, and out of those, 31 were sporadics, 8 were Perseids, and one was an Alpha Capricornid. So that there you have it, 40 fireballs. That's kind of a lot. That's only over 14 different states. I mean, can you imagine if they were covering the whole U.S. or the whole Earth? How many fireballs that would be? I mean, really, that's uh, something to contemplate. Schumann residence today in Italy was 24 hertz frequency. It's kind of low compared to the next numbers I'm going to tell you. I'm going to see how many minutes we have left. Okay, yeah, plenty of time. Cool. All right, so according to heartmath.org, this is a HeartMath Institute, and their GCMS magnetometer, their Schumann resonances power is, uh, they're a little bit behind. They're not in real time like they used to be. But from August 3rd, which is Monday, at the 2300 hours, so about a day and a half ago, This is where the Schumann residence was at. In California, they were at 188 hertz frequency. In Hofuf, Saudi Arabia, they were at 114 hertz frequency. In Lithuania, they were at 180 hertz frequency. In Alberta, Canada, who get this one, they were at 466. Hertz frequency. In Northland, New Zealand, they were at 81 Hertz frequency. And last but not least, in Hulului, South Africa, they were at 129 Hertz frequency. Remember, spiritual people say we're in the fifth dimension already. And scientific people say, What the flock you're talking about? You sound crazy. You say, no, let's use use science. Let's talk your language. The bottom rung of the fifth dimension is 40 hertz frequency. And the lowest hertz frequency on the list I gave you just now was 81. Northland, New Zealand. I mean, that's well into... Well into the fifth dimension. I can't tell you what's going on in Italy, why they're below 40 hertz. Maybe it's the Vatican holding all of Italy back. I have a feeling there's some evil secrets there. I'm not going to blame the current Pope. I mean, he's new. He just got there. But it's been going on for centuries. I don't know. I don't even want to speculate more about it today. But I always wonder why Italy is so low. Um, on the energy vibration of the Schumann resonance, though. It's it's just so... And people, like, if it gets up to 70, people are like, ooh, ah, oh. And I'm like, well, that's actually lower than the lowest number in heartmath.org. So. But when you say you feel it, you're probably not feeling the little 70 spike over in Italy, you're probably feeling the 400 spike in Alberta, Canada. 
more likely. Even the 188 spike in California, you know what I mean? So, but there's science backing it up. I mean, backing up the claims that we've all been making and thank God, thank God. And, and you could tell like the, the colors of the sky, it's just been freaking psychedelic as hell lately with the noctilucent clouds, with the upper atmosphere, with Steve showing up. You know, you got to look that up, S-T-E-V-E. It's a sky phenomenon where there's like suddenly like a, a green picket fence in the sky and purple pillars coming from, from the earth. I mean, it just seems like this should be fifth dimensional stuff, right? You know, and they're like, oh yeah, this is a brand new phenomenon I just discovered a couple of years ago. Yeah, you mean when we entered the fifth dimension? <laughs> okay. All right. You know, spiritual people everywhere are like, um, yeah, we've been talking about the rainbows in the sky for a long time. And the, the, the latest noctilucent cloud is not blue, but red. <laughs> so the sky is looking like freaking purple. Yeah. Hello. Fifth dimension. <laughs> Fifth dimension much. Anyway. <laughs> All right, ACIM.org is the foundation for inner peace. This is where you will find for absolutely free the lessons and insights that are contained in A Course in Miracles. We've been reading this for quite some time. In fact, today is lesson 349. So here we go. Today I let Christ's vision look upon all things for me and judge them not, but give each one a miracle of love instead. Today I let Christ's vision look upon all things for me and judge them not but give each one a miracle of love instead so would I liberate all things I see and give to them the freedom that I seek for thus do I obey the law of love and give what I would find and make my own It will be given me because I have chosen it as the gift I want to give. Father, your gifts are mine. Each one that I accept gives me a miracle to give. And giving as I would receive, I learn your healing miracles belong to me. Our Father knows our needs. He gives us grace to meet them all. And so we trust in him to send us miracles to bless the world and heal our minds as we return to him. Today, I let Christ's vision look upon all things for me and judge them not, but give each one a miracle of love instead. All right, well, there you have it. That's it for the introduction, guys. I'm going to take a quick break. And when I come back, I'm going to do a tarot card reading for all of us, for the collective whole. I'm going to do a basic Celtic cross spread and just kind of get us, get a little kind of feeling for what's going on and where are we at right now right after these messages so stay tuned for your reading happy august guys i wanted to extend to you my birthday special. I was born this month and I wanted to do something for you guys. Normally, my readings are $111, 
for a tarot reading or a psychic mediumship reading. That means I can basically help you talk to any of your deceased loved ones, your higher self, even God himself, or any of the ascended masters that you've always wanted to have a conversation with. What you need to do is just contact me at mermaidgirl888 on Instagram. Just direct message me and let me know you're interested in having the birthday special $88 reading. That is $33 less than my normal price. And as always, my cloud readings are also available at $33. So there you have it. Happy August. I look forward to hearing from you. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Okay, (laughs) you can tell I have my cards out because I I did that little shuffle for your ASMR benefit. (laughs) Now, um, there's a lot of readers on the internet and a lot of people out there doing collective readings or readings for the collective whole or readings for the spiritual collective or readings for humanity etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, I don't interpret the cards the way that other people do necessarily I'm going to give you guys uh, tonight some information from a website that I found that has pretty decent quick explanations about the cards so I'll give you like that as well as what's uh, being told to me by God himself because I have channeled been channeling God throughout the show for a year and a half Um, I've been connected with the creator for years and through this connection of just constantly trying to hear and working on my intuition I've been able to be completely connected And now I'm in complete communication with God. So a lot of these uh, cards are, you know, the way I interpret them, 
is literally the way that God interprets them right now in this moment. So sometimes they're not totally like what the card means. Um, a couple notes from a couple of the readers that I've had weird words with in the past couple weeks. One of them said something about a um, a card or two. I don't. I can't remember what the situation was, but I do remember that she said, "Hey." Uh, these cards mean this. These, this is what you know. I pulled out of the deck, and I said, "Well, I could see that the cards themselves mean that, but in this situation, with what's going on in the world with humanity, this is how I would interpret this card as kind of an overall uh, view of what's happening with you know the collective whole versus." the unawakened ones, you know, the ascension as well as what the card says. You know, um, I, I have a different interpretation for this card in this moment with what's going on in the world, basically. And she was like, I don't know what kind of tarot card reader you are. It sounds like you're just a channeler. <laughs> And it sounds like you don't really know what the cards mean. And I don't know, I'm here to tell you guys, this is the thing. When it comes to reading tarot cards, it depends on the situation, the person, the energy. You know, like, usually, for example, the justice card means uh, that... uh, there's a lawsuit or a legal matter pending or something getting ready to be very legal very quickly. You know, or it could go that way. It might be a warning card or it might be, this is what you're going through. Hey, are you going through a lawsuit right now? Usually the person would say yes. But I'm telling you guys, I used to read tarot cards um, professionally for money um, 30 years ago. <laughs> on a hotline I made like 12 bucks an hour to literally read tarot cards for people and I was good and I, I did this for like a year I had an amazing I loved this job and I'm telling you what guys two or three times within one week The justice card did not mean legal issues or a legal pressing matter. It meant the person was going into the police academy. (laughs) That's justice. It was weird. And sometimes justice card means karma. It just depends on the person and the situation. But I remember pulling this card and I was like, are you considering a career in law enforcement? Yes, I applied to the academy today, as a matter of fact. And then the next time I got that card, I was like, you're going to be a cop, aren't you? And, and the guy was like, yeah, how did you know that? That's weird. I'm like, yeah, there's not a single card in the whole of tarot that says you're going to be a cop. But I got this card a few days ago and I got a very strong impression about it. And I just got that same impression now, you know, um, The thing is with tarot cards, you don't see most people shuffle, 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 shuffle the cards and then they cut the deck in half. And then the next 20 cards or 10 cards that come out of that for off the top, those are the cards that you read. That's how it is is done traditionally. How I do it is I shuffle the cards and I ask a holy guardian angel tonight. We have with us Archangel Michael. He is with us right now during the whole reading. He's protecting um, the reading and all of us as we go through this. Um, And every time I do this, I have an archangel literally lift the card up and out of the deck as I'm shuffling. And I ask God to work through the angel to pull it through, to pull it out of my hand. To me, that's a much more... um, it's, it, it's much more accurate this way. 
the way I do tarot is a hundred percent my own thing that I have developed um, since I was 18 years old and had my first deck over 30 years so that so that was like the first run-in with that had somebody with uh, in regards with uh, the the online you know the the people who are like they've been reading you know tarot almost every day for two whole years so they know what they're doing and I'm like dude I've been doing it for 30 fucking years so I, I know what I'm doing but the way that I'm doing it is my own way you know you develop your own style in your own way you know and you could do it traditionally and have 100% accurate reading you just gotta shuffle the cards enough times you gotta shuffle it right you gotta keep your mind 100% on the game focused on 10 cards but the way I do it is I focus on one card at a time and I have Archangel Michael today pick it out I think the last time we had Archangel Gabriel do it and the time before that I think was Archangel Oriel I think before that was Raphael actually so we have different um, angels pulling out different cards at different times um It's just the way I do it. And then what I do is I look up the card, what it means. I get my own personal impressions. And I also ask God directly, what does this card mean for us today, right now, in this moment? Because sometimes it means an impending legal matter. And sometimes it means you're joining the damn police academy. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like there's always different ways to do this. So I haven't mentioned my tarot policies in a while. You know, the second run in I had with somebody was very strange. A, a month ago, when I read you guys the July reading for the collective, uh, I told this woman um, I saw her reading an hour after I published mine, and she had just published hers. And she had three cards that she had drawn, and three of those cards were exactly in my reading, those exact cards. And I told her, um, you're not going to believe this, but I just drew 10 cards, three of which are your exact cards. And I just published it on my show. And I said, here's a link if you're interested. And I love it when you get confirmations. Isn't this great? And she came back at me with, are you honestly advertising your link on my post and I was like as a matter of fact I was giving you the link to prove to you that we got the same cards and it's wonderful how the universe works to give us all confirmation but she had said some other things that were quite nasty actually and I said because I am a public figure because I have had over 500 episodes of my show you know, and I'm gained to be pretty popular that I was actually planning on not only giving you the link, but also telling everybody about you and your talents and abilities. And now I'm not going to promote you. I've already forgotten your name and I'm no longer following you because of your short-sighted nastiness. So those are like two of the weirdest things that have happened to me. Usually the tarot readers are amazing. They're like, oh my God, I can't believe you got the same cards as me. Holy man. Well, that's good. That means that we're both on the right track, right? (laughs) You know, I mean like a typical human being would, but I mean, so I've had some very strange things going on online. So, but the way I do it is a little bit different than everyone else. And I just wanted to spend 10 minutes uh, explaining you know pretty much my policy and how I do it Uh, All right, let me go ahead and I'm going to go to this I'm going to tell you guys this website crystalwind.ca crystalwind.ca this is a pretty good website I've been here on this one before but this is just they have like a quick guide for um, what does she say what is it called Tarot card meanings, a quick reference guide. Yeah, exactly. So just so I'm going to tell you quickly what the cards mean. So 
I did a Celtic cross reading already, uh, picked out the cards. Like I said, Archangel Michael grabbed the cards that God told him to grab uh, for every the things. And then I had a connection with God at the same time. So it's kind of like a double whammy here as far as what's going on. Who, where we are right now as a, as a spiritual collective, th- this is those of us who are awake spiritually right now and aware of the, of the ascension and blah, blah, blah. Right. So, okay. Where we are at right now, I got the King of Swords, the King of Swords. So, um, this is, uh, the King of Mental Clarity, according to the Tarot of the Andes. This is the cards I'm using. Um, so I'm going to give you what the uh, typical interpretation is, and then I'll tell you what my what what my input is. Okay, so um, I'll make sure this is yeah. Okay. So King of Swords is serious, controlling, rational, and mind or intellect focused. Okay, so, and then this says mental clarity, and so when I look at this card, I'm going to ask God, what, do you want to say something from this? He says yes, okay. You all have been operating very much from a level of mental clarity lately. You've been very much aware of what is happening and when it's happening, not only on a grand global scale of social justice of course with the black lives matter movement as well as some other social corrections that are being made but there's been a mental clarity from the social global perspective on down to the individual what's happening today in my own kitchen and or living room (laughs) so basically what's going on you know from the macrocosm to the microcosm basically you have had a really abnormally clear mentality lately or, or mental clarity lately. So, uh, King Swords and for me, my personal interpretation is that we have been operating through our intellect and we've been walking through the world with that clearness of mind we're seeing everything clearly we're seeing through people who would bullshit us we're seeing all of our lives uh, all of our things in our life just oh okay I see it like this now alright good now I know how I'm going to proceed okay cool this is so much easier now like suddenly the fog is lifted and now we're clear. That's how I see it. So you got God's interpretation, the the quote unquote real thing that the terror and you know. I can believe that woman's like, I just think you're channeling and nothing else. It's like you you know, like I said one quick little comment and then she just judged everything I do without knowing anything at all about me. I'm like, I also deleted her. <laughs> I unfollowed her too in two seconds. It's like I don't need to be spoken to and you know when I'm trying to it, it, I was like these both of these women I was trying to promote because they were amazing readers and they both came at me with this just such a strange egoic attitude I was like nah I was wrong wrong to follow you in the first place <laughs> I it just it was like so strange but yeah no I do I channel God I interpret it from my own Uh, psychic intuition as well as I say what the card means then I put it all together I just think my readings are pretty accurate um, from what other people have told me you know Um, anyway what's crossing us right now or opposition to us is the enthusiastic queen (laughs) Rena Enthusiasta okay so we have queen of wands the Queen of Wands. So, and also I interpret the cards, by the way, from my years of study 
the Holy Tarot and the Kabbalah in a mystery school. So I just, you know, you know, I didn't get all my answers from a little booklet that came with the cards only. Like the woman who was, is like how she was interpreting it directly from the booklet. Queen of Wands. All right. So this is something that opposes us and crosses us, but it kind of gets in our way. We're trying to have mental clarity, and at the same time, we get enthusiastic about our clarity. And so we're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then we start muddying the waters again with probably the ever-elusive hope monster. (laughs) Okay, so uh, we're going to look up Queen of Wands in the what it actually supposedly is right okay so the queen of wands is confident focused and has a zest for life but the reversed and none of these are reversed i never use the reversals but the reverse meaning of it is fatigue and that does kind of go along with my interpretation of this card right now because even though we've had mental clarity and we're like yes finally I'm starting to see the light, right? And then the light starts shining super bright because it's the queen of wands with her wand. And it's like, oh my gosh, so bright. We get so excited. We're hopping up and down. And now we've lost our ability to focus. And now we are fatiguing ourselves out because we're so excited about having that mental clarity because it's been so freaking long, hasn't it? That we finally are able to see. But the But it's not a bad card. This what's crossing us the enthusiastic queen, as it were, (laughs) the queen of wands is, um, she is confident. She is focused and her zest for life. But I think it's possible we are over interpreting our lives and over extending our psychic reach into what's happening, what's happening, what's happening, you know, like always trying to figure it out, figure it out. You know, drawing all the cards every day, using a pendulum, you know, always, you know, trying to figure it out. I think we, we've gotten to the point where we're maybe exhausting ourselves a little bit with it. So, God, is there anything you want to add to that? He says, no, I think you did a good job. Thank you, God. All right. He's like, that's pretty much what's happening. So, there we go. Now, what is our foundation of this situation? Awesome. <laughs> okay, awesome isn't a card. Temperance is an awesome card, though. Temperance is the card that we got at the uh, foundation of it all right now. So, Temperance is a wonderful card because it's an angel with one foot in the water, one foot on the shore. That It's like kind of an equal balance between the solidity, the structure... And the subconscious mind, you know, um, it's kind of walking that exact path between good and evil, you know, or, you know, anything, any middle path. It's definitely a middle path card. Our foundation is that we have achieved balance. We have achieved balance. We're not relying on, on our subconscious minds. We're not operating out of knee-jerk reactions in our memories any longer. We are not operating only from a material world standpoint. We are operating from a higher clarity and focus and guidance. And we're interpreting things correctly now. And so we have been able to be tempered (laughs) <laughs> not angry, like having a temper, but we have tempered our life. We're like, yeah, dude, we foundly, we finally found, we foundly <laughs> the foundation of peace and balance and harmony. So God, is there anything else you want to say with this card? He says, yes, it's the foundation of harmony that completes you and completes your circuits as it were instead of reaching and reaching reaching for something you haven't gotten yet or just 
grasping onto what you have and never trying or being ambitious for anything in the future, you have achieved a balance and a harmony of you love what you have, you know where you're going, you know what you want in all areas of your life. And this mental clarity that's coming down and the enthusiasm that's coming down, even if it's making you feel a little bit tired, you are actually standing on a very solid foundation. You're not being too materialistic. You are being exactly the right amount of ambition for your purpose and and goals. You're not being too wallowing around your subconscious patterns anymore. You are able to see what they are and understand them and love them and know that if they don't serve you, you don't need to pay attention to them anymore, basically. So that's pretty much God's interpretation. Now, the cards, the, the meaning on Crystal Wind of Temperance is, looking it up, okay, balance, moderation, being sensible, and of course reversed is impatience. See, you see how my interpretation is so much richer, and then God's is even more richer. <laughs> that's why I give you guys so much, so much to go on. That's why my readings have become very popular. All right, here we go. Now, what is our most recent past? What have we just finished letting go of? All right, let me check where we're at here. Yeah, all right, good. I thought we were at 23. I wanted to make certain. All right, so what have we just let go of? And that card is the Page of Swords. Usually a page is a messenger, and of course swords could mean a decision it could be something that cuts you you know the the double edged sword like you know it could bring you a harsh truth or it could you know just cut you down or it could mean just a decision you know something mental so the page of swords And there is an 11 on this card, like a Gemini symbol. So it might have something to do with in the most recent past. If you are a twin flame, there might be that. Um, You got a message that was pretty clear about what he or she is thinking. All right, so that's my, my interpretation of it. So God, you want to add something? to the most recent past page of swords okay he does so what you have left behind is rumors of of the past the page of swords is possible interpretation he's telling me it's not always the interpretation it's what's going on now It's a rumor you had heard about someone and you made a decision based on that rumor. And you weren't sure if the rumor was true or not. He says that's the case for some of you. Not all of you. But he's saying now in general, as a general collective whole reading of the spiritual collective... He's saying, there's been recently a decision made in your past. Some information came to light and you took a decision and you made it, you made it your own and you ran with it. And that's leading to your greater mental clarity that you are experiencing today and specifically this week. So, all right, let me see what Page of Swords says. In the website, but I was like already on it. Okay, a uh, page of swords says being mentally unstable or intellectually immature acts without thinking, and the reverse card of this is stupidity. <laughs> That's hilarious. Stupidity, like I've never read that before for this card, but. Very interesting insight, right? 
So were you mentally unstable? Were you intellectually immature? That might be the people that, that treated me like that, you know, with, in regards to my uh, readings. It's very strange. People get very up in arms and egotistical about their readings, especially on Instagram, when they're trying to, um, you know, do this for a living, especially they get a little testy, right? You know, and I've been giving you guys these readings monthly for over a year, you know, just because I, I want to just get a clear mental picture of not only where I am, but where all we, all of us are, where we all are in relationship to, um, this ascension and whatnot. So it's possible that, you know, in, in that's funny that I interpret that is as rumors when it could just be being intellectually immature or mentally unstable, which would lead to, you know, rumor gossip mill, you know, type of thing. But also at the same time, maybe it is being intellectually immature. I mean, like the person, like, are you honestly leaving me a link? Like that was like so crazy, right? Like why? I don't even want to ask why I don't even care. I just, I just deleted her. I'm like, wow, you're going to come at me with something so negative after I totally confirmed what you just said. And she doesn't know if I'm a really good reader or not, but she could have asked a question. Oh yeah. I've been reading for two years. How long have you been doing it? And I'd be like 32 years. So I don't know. It's not really a pissing contest, but if it was, I'm pissing farther and faster than you. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm doing this on multiple levels. I, I do my, my readings are multidimensional over here. So, all right, look, um, the next card is what is above us? What is a message from our collector, collector, collective higher self, which would basically be, um, God, right? So this card says one word in Spanish on the bottom, abundancia, basically abundance. What are we to accept into our lives right now? But the three of cups and right on there is a picture of, or a little tiny symbol of mercury. So talking about love, abundance, three is the Holy Trinity. So it's a very good card. I mean, I'm looking at this, just you're filled with all kinds of love. Your, your cup overfloweth with love and abundance as well. So, all right. What does it say in the interpretation here of on the website it says that the three of cups is celebration fun with friends and laughter laughter so that's your message from God to you what should you be doing right now through life celebrate fun with friends laughter I mean you could do Skype sessions or have Zoom meetings with your friends in this age of coronavirus. I don't recommend getting together with your friends, but you talk to people on the phone, right? FaceTime, whatever. Facebook, FaceTime. Any of the faces, actually. (laughs) Three of Cups, three faces of Eve. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe there's another face thing. I don't know. (laughs) But, um, anyway, so three of cups, uh, God, is there anything you want to add to that? He says, no, I think that one's pretty clear. I do too. All right. What's in our future? What's in our next two to three weeks and what's right in front of us? What's ahead of us is the card, the hermit. Ooh, I love the hermit card again with the Virgo symbol on it, baby. And the symbol of mercury as well. The hermit card doesn't mean we're going to be alone, although we are all isolated with the coronavirus. We should be. 
unless we're on the front lines, and if you are, you know to wear a mask. So, anyway, the hermit card is basically, it's it's a symbol of a man who has achieved self-realization and self-actualization. And he gets to the top of a mountain, and he looks like he's very, very lonely. But in reality world, he's holding up a lamp, and this is the light for the world to follow. And he's waiting patiently for everyone else to catch up to him because he has arrived spiritually, baby. He's got that lamp, and he's shining it for all the world to see. He's letting his little light shine, as it were. So the Hermit card is a good card because it means that you've achieved a next the next level of spiritual stuff, basically. Spiritual rung or spiritual... It's not like anyone's taking complete count of it, but there is an accounting. You know, when you get to a certain level, you're never going to fall back. But the hermit, that means we've all kind of gone up one, I think. We'll see what it says on the cards. I've I've heard people interpret this card as you're homeless or you're going to (laughs) be. It's total BS. (laughs) <laughs> it makes me laugh so hard, though, when people interpret it that way. It's like, no, I don't think so. All right, the hermit, uh, according to Crystal Links, means meditation, solitude, consciousness, and in reverse, it means isolation, which is what we're all experiencing now with a global pandemic on and whatnot. <laughs> so, God, you want to interpret this in a different way? Do I add anything to it? He says no. He says just, um, he said mention the rainbow. On this particular set of cards, he is surrounded by a rainbow energy of light that starts below his feet in the earth and goes all the way up Kundalini style, up the channels of Kundalini to his, the top of his, Actually, at the top of his neck, not really the top of his head. But it's very interesting artwork for sure. All right. So, yeah. The, that's in the next two to three weeks. We're going to be achieving a new level, the next level of boom. Spiritual. I don't want to say upmanship, that's not the right word, but just moving up one, basically. We're moving up a rung in the next two, three weeks, which makes sense because Lion's Gate Portal is just around the corner. It's like, what, three days from now? So, there you go. All right, let me check our, our time here. All right. So, the next card is, how do us as spiritual people see ourselves right now? And the card I got is the Judgment card. The Judgment card. There's a lot going on in this card. It's a very deep card. So let's just look on this website. I don't know. I think I have too much knowledge on this card. I would confuse you. All right. Judgment means, um, according to Crystal Links, Rebirth, a new phase, inner calling. Now, reversed can mean regrets. So if you're having any regrets, go back into the other part of the card, you know, the other part of your mind, and let go of even having regrets. Get back into that. Rebirth, a new phase, and the inner calling. So that's what that says. Uh, what do I say? Judge judgment. Uh, my initial interpretation of this is that we're all pretty convinced at this point based on what's happening in the world that it's the biblical end times for sure. And it does feel quite a bit confusing energetically while we're working towards ascension that the end of the world would be happening it seems 
counterintuitive. Like, God, we did all this work, now the world is ending, what the hell? But I think it's just the the third dimension. It's like breaking away and breaking up as a form of spiritual rocket booster to lift us up deeper and deeper and higher into the fifth dimension. Anyway, God, do you want to add anything to the judgment part here? No. Okay, the answer is no. All right, how do the people that are sleeping how do they view us right now because we've had mixed feelings on this in the past so the card I drew was well not me sorry the card that God told Archangel Michael to pull out of my hand because <laughs> I didn't drop myself I just allowed it to be pulled out by the angel uh, anyway this how how did they see us this is pretty much um, the two of cups So they see us as loving. They see us as attractive. But they don't really know why, I think. There's something about us. They just can't put a finger on it. But we're, you know, able to uh, go that extra mile and love the extra amount. And we're all um, working on ourselves in such a way that will help us not only extend love to ourselves, but we're extending love to every man, woman, and child on the planet. If you're not doing that, that's a good goal. Trust me on this. You have to stand on a solid base of love in order to open up all of your chakras, all 12 of your chakras. So, I I mean, I look at this card and I think two of cups is wonderful. It does stand for twin flames, but in this part of the reading, the way that other people look at us, they see us as loving, joy-filled, amazing. Like, they want to be near us. They don't know why. They want to be with us. They can't explain it. It's because of the love that we're radiating, though. You know, you have two goblets in your hands filled with the you know they're cups of love and you fill them up and that's the way they're looking at us we're attractive and they don't totally know why it's weird all right so let's see looking up the suit of cups what does it say in the in the book as it were it's technically all mine but um So we already have the three cups now. This is the two of cups, which means partnership, mutual attraction, compatibility, but in reverse can mean abandonment. So I don't ever interpret the reversals, but in case you do, and it feels right for you in the moment. But how are people viewing you? Well, you're, you'd make a good partner. You're, you're pretty attractive. And... Um, the, un- the unawakened ones are like, oh, I wonder if uh, we're compatible. You know, while you're like working on yourself, you know, even though we all have this mental clarity now, thank God. You know, you're out there working on yourself, you're doing your own thing. People are finding you attractive and they don't know why. I think it's the magnetism that we're all creating with our meditation and our constant focus on the spirituality thing that we are it's almost like we're attracting love to our lives whether it's not what we're looking for or it is that's how the outside world is viewing us right now that there's something about us they can't figure it out but we, uh, we've got it made somehow, they think. And in a lot of ways, we are. We're all very loving people. You know, we're, we're very much... Um, we do make good partners. We're consciously aware. We have mental clarity now. 
we've left our spiritual immaturity behind and we're willing to accept abundance into our lives so obviously it's a good card to be there so uh, God you want to add anything to that he says no All right. so in the next <laughs> the next card is the hopes and fears card hopes and or fears <laughs> so we're going to change that to the haves and or fears the things you wish to have uh, this card is oh I just got a wild energy just humbling my body right now I think it's some kind of cosmic radiation going on. All right, so in the next three months, and or the hopes and fears, which haves and fears, we call it. This card is the Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups. I think in the next three months, we're going to attract more love into our lives. I think that's how I would interpret this one. And the next uh, person who comes into our lives in three months. I don't know. I just feel like it's going to be like good, solid love. We've done our work and we're ready for it, right? So, yeah. Right, there it is. The Knight of Cups. God, do you want to add anything to the next three month, months, the Knight of Cups? He says, yeah. Everyone's going to have a man to play a specific role in their lives. Not significant, like, meaning days and weeks and months on end. Not someone moving in with you, but rather... You're going to have people, male energy people, regardless of body or whatever, but the male energy, uh, like the collective divine masculine, is coming into his power at this moment, and he will be just... um, there for us in a lot of ways. So even if you're not with your twin flame, you'll have a, a man who is embody the divine masculine versus just masculinity in general and he's going to help you in some way even if it's a small way and this restore in your faith and humanity is going to prompt things that you need in your life to come and happen you know whether it's love or money or whatever it is you're seeking the knight of knight cups is on his way to you he's coming with love he's coming with a message and that's what it is so um, knight of cups according to the website (laughs) means romantic adventurous following one's heart the reverse side of it can be pessimism so you have to guard against that of course so yeah I like that too romantic adventurous following one's heart that's what our next three months are going to be like three months from now possibly so you take mine God's or the website's version of it. However, this will apply to your life. It will, you know. Every individual is different. And yet we do have these commonalities in the collective whole, which has been pretty awesome. All right, so the final outcome for this whole reading, which I also interpret as six months, six months from now, And what we got here, leave my glasses back on. Writing is impossibly small to read on these cards. We got the Empress. That's such a cool card. So in the next six months, the Empress, you could create your world the way you want it. 
You are the author of your own life book. You are the painter. And the world is your gallery. You create whatever you want. And that's in six months. So you're going to feel like you have a complete and total handle of your divine feminine energy. Whether you're in a male or female body or your gender is um, incongruent with what your body's doing. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about gender stuff here. I'm talking about embodying and embracing the divine feminine in the form of the empress. So six months from now. I, I don't know. I see that as a very good sign. I feel like that means we're going to have our, our shite together <laughs> in six months. Like our divine feminine power is going to be like, yes, and we're standing in our power. And here we are. It's awesome. It's an awesome card. Okay. So according to the website, what the Empress means is... And by the way, that's number three. <clears throat> and I want to point it out that it's directly across from what our higher self is telling us in the three of cups. And then the cups is also relating to what's happening with the divine masculine energy in three months. So it's all kind of related, obviously. But I love that that's the three of cups is across from the empress. which means, you know, abundance and creativity. So overall, this is a very positive reading, honestly. So according to the the website, what the Empress means is abundance, nurturing, fertility, life in bloom. Life in bloom. Reverse of that, of course, is neglect. So don't neglect yourself six months from now. Your life is going to be blooming the way you needed it to because of your newfound mental clarity. So God, do you want to add anything else to the creatrix? He says, yes, it's the goddess coming down to earth in the form of all of you. The high vibrational divine feminine will finally be realized in six months or less. Some individuals will accept it sooner and some will accept it later. Some will choose not to adopt it at all, but a massive energy infusion of the divine feminine is on its way. Only the awakened ones, the willing ones, are going to get this. But it's a game changer. The energy coming to earth is a game changer in six months. And the divine masculine energies are going to start to feel in three months and sense it coming. They sense this. And and I'm seeing like a big pulse wave coming our way. So I told you guys when I start channeling God, I mean, pulse wave is nowhere near any of the tarot cards interpretation or meaning. So. Yeah. I feel like this, what's coming in the next six months is going to knock out all of our fears, doubts, worries, anxieties, all of our hopes for the future. (laughs) Ha ha. And we're just going to have the energy of just being. And that's what the divine feminine is. She's happy, creative in her garden, doing the thing that she loves the most. Not worrying about abundance, not worrying about money or interpreting, you know, every little thing like, you know, bills and all that. She's already sitting on a throne. She's already happy. She has all the abundance she needs. And that's going to be us too in six months. All of us are going to feel like, oh, thank God. Thank God. 
at least that's why I'm interpreting that. You guys, are anything we want to add to the uh, Empress? Okay. No, he's saying a right, a, a right now. No. Mm-mm. All right. Well, there it is. That's it, guys. Putting the cards away. Taking my toys and going home. <laughs> So it just felt like there's a lot of nods to the divine masculine and the divine feminine as far as coming into our own personal power. Whether you're a twin flame or not, you are a divine, either one, male or female. It doesn't matter. It's it's the energy. You could have a female body and embrace and embody the divine masculine and vice versa. So there it is. Where are we headed? We're heading towards our best life filled with creative creativity and endeavors that will <coughs> nurture our souls and our and ignite our passions and inspire us. You can't really hope for a better outcome than that, so there it is, guys. That's it. Another reading done. That's your August reading. So happy August, by the way. I don't know if I said happy August officially. It is my birth month. I'm excited about that. So, um, yeah, well, there you go. I will be back tomorrow with all unique and original programming, just like always. I want to thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing, and forwarding this podcast to all of your friends even to your enemies you know god knows they need the good advice they need to not any longer be anyone's enemy getting out of that old ego pattern <laughs> thank you for those of you who have posted about me on instagram it's helped a lot and i'm grateful for your service to me as i am here in service to you and I'm here in service to God by servicing humanity that sounded a little weird at the end there but you know what I'm you know what I mean I I do this as a kind of a public service honestly I'm here for you guys and here it is so um, I'm grateful that I spent most of my life gaining the knowledge and I'm able to, um, well, put my knowledge out there into the world. It's, it's awesome. And thank you for those of you who have taken advantage of the August $88 special. I will be getting your reading to you soon. (coughs) And thank you to, to those of you who are posting on Facebook and Instagram, like I said, I love all of you. I love every single one of you. And I'm grateful that you're on this ascension journey with me. And that we all decided to incarnate on earth at the same time. It's pretty damn cool. We're probably standing in line together. Just so excited to get here. I mean, until we're here. And then we're like, what the hell were we thinking? Why did we even do this? That's usually the way, right? Instant buyer's remorse. But, um, yeah, so thank you guys. Thank you all for everything. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's it for now. I can't tell you what the show's going to be about tomorrow because I'm not really sure myself. Might be fairy tales. Might be fairy tales. We'll see. Anyway, that's it for now for me. That's all she wrote. I am out of here. I'm tired. Very tired. I'm being bombarded by some kind of radiation, cosmic gamma rays, plasma. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I feel it. And it's like an instant, like tiredness. So I'm going to get this out there, produce the show, publish it. And that's it. I'm signing off you guys with peace and joy and high vibes of the Holy Fifth Dimension. Until next time, guys, peace.
Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.